This one feels like it may be... I, I, I don't know how brutal this one's going to be. Title of the video. Some of these expectations for Cade Cunningham are weird. The draft was just about to happen. We obviously, you know, with the first pick, the you know, lottery had already happened. We knew we were taking Cade. Um, I know there was there was definitely some rumblings that we could have gone with Jalen Green. We could have gone with Evan Mobley. But the, the larger expectation was that that was noise and, you know, Cade was the pick. So we got a nine and a half minute video in the chamber here. I I am a little bit nervous about this one because I again dude, obviously dude, I haven't watched any of these videos so I don't <laughs> I'm nervous about this one let's jump into it though listen there is a rather large elephant in the room and I think I've done a very good job propagizing prop propaganda I've done a really really good job creating propaganda about Cade Cunningham and his arrival to Detroit. And I pro I promise this will be the last thing, the last video I make about Cade for like a little bit cuz I know I've talked about him a lot. Uh but and then w once this is done, we can you guys can go back to being like, "Can you make an Orlando Magic video?" No. <laughs> you fuckers still do that. You still do that too. We just did one with the Wizards the other day. You never talk about my basketball team. And I what was I I'm not trying to shit on the guy who sent the email. But I still get that. I still get that. <laughs> because I care about how my videos perform. The number Facts. one thing that has pissed me off, of well, I, of which there are several things, but I think the number one thing, and I've been very clear about this, Rockets fans and Cavs fans feeling eerily entitled to Cade on their basketball team. You did not win the lottery. You did not tank well enough. I'm really, really sorry that you, the lottery, but I'm, Mark Tatum hates you guys. It's not my fault. Fuckers. I'm sorry that he likes Detroit better. Be better. It's almost like in uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which, by the way, when that came out, was, I think, the most impressive graphical achievement uh, in the history of video games. And then God of War came out. And it was like, actually us. And I was like, ah, Horizon Zero Dawn, still a really good game. Uh, I can already tell this little bit is going to take a minute. So if you don't care about video game references, go ahead and speed ahead like 60 seconds because, again, this, this might take me a second. She was doing okay, uh, yeah, the Okay, yeah, we're going to actually... They and Turn your face to the sun, child. Which, by the fuck am I talking about? We're skipping ahead here picture of me with my arm around Kate Cunningham. But anyways, I, I think Pistons the, the Sun is a picture of me with my arm around Kate Cunningham. Right. But anyways, I, I think Pistons fans, it, well, I guess it's really basketball fans, but just for the sake of it, we'll just use Pistons fans as an example because it's relevant. Uh, Pistons fans have been so uh, saturated in their self-perpetuated misery and skepticism and frankly pessimism because of past regimes and what their blunders have been uh, in the draft that we're now lying to ourselves about what Cade Cunningham is, which is in turn talking about what he's actually not, because you feel like you have to overcompensate and overcorrect for the fact that you don't think people want Cade to be in Detroit. And for the most part, I don't think most people do the way that, oh my gosh, Anthony Edwards has to go to Minnesota. Oh, that sucks. You know, people do that with teams all the, all, like every single year. Uh, so people, the point that I'm getting to here is there's a sect of Pistons Twitter who I've encountered on multiple occasions who try to convince everybody that Cade, coming out of the draft, is a better prospect than Zion. Well, I, 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 oh, okay. Let's. Do we have enough time to... And I'm probably going to say something and sound like a smartass when I unpause this video, and I'm honestly scared to do it. Because I don't think we have enough time to unpack that. Who would you take right now? Would you take Zion or would you take Cade? I'm trying as hard as I can to not be biased about it. I mean, I think I would take Zion. I mean, first of all, at the time, yeah, that was a bananas take. Like, that was that was insane. Um, I think even addressing any part of Pistons Twitter, even the part that I liked, as if there was, like, credence to anything that they were saying, is already chronically online in and of itself. So at that point, honestly, it's kind of null and void because who gives a shit about what, like, 15 people on the internet are saying? Like, they're not real. Um, you, uh, I mean, I would still take Cade, but if I'm being objective, I would take Zion, I think. No, Cade, I'm sorry. I'm taking you, dude. No, I do not need to explain to you why that is the most asinine thing I have ever heard in my life. It's also annoying to me. Cringe. I hate when people are like, oh, look at the, how this team has just missed on so many stars in the draft. And people always cite Detroit mainly because of Darko as if every now the Darko thing was is, is it's an exception in and of itself. But um, it's just annoying to me. Look at any team 
and they've missed on a superstar or at least a star at some point like over the course of a decade. It happens with everybody. And unless you're Memphis, because it doesn't it hasn't happened with Memphis recently. Kate Cunningham, Nick, get to the video. Talk about Kate. Seriously. An incredibly gifted and high IQ passer who can score at three levels, can play bully ball. I know that people, yeah. like just draft experts, are like, ah, oh, those low assist numbers for Cade Cunningham, that's a little bit worrisome. Yeah, it's not, though, because you can easily find like a 30-minute supercut of all of the assist opportunities that Cade had at Oklahoma State. Like, he wasn't just the engine that made that offense run. He was like the, I don't know, car people. What a, what a, what a, what a, if it's a Tesla, he was the battery. But like that, well, that's not. Cade was literally it, and it's not. That he was the car, fucker. Just say he was the car. He was the whole load. Pause. I say like people miss open shots all the time. You could find super long supercuts of anybody missing a bunch of shots. But the point that I'm making is, is like he would set guys up effortlessly, especially because he, he got doubled all the time. You want to talk about Cade? You know what impresses me the most about Cade Cunningham? Something Splitting that nobody doubles. talks about nearly as much as they should. Throw two guys at him. Throw a double at Cade and watch what happens. Either he's going to throw an elite level slip pass for a guy who's six foot eight, or he's going to split it. Effortlessly, like the way that he's just—he's like a—he's like a man. It's just gone. Like he just, two bodies in case, like Bleh, I'm already gone. A lot of people question. A lot of you guys have actually asked me this. Like, how is it going to work with Killian? The thing with Killian and Cade is Killian is going to have to really adapt to an off-ball role, which is something that when he came back after his hip injury uh, this past season, they really tried to integrate him into the offense with Corey Joseph in an off-ball role. And I think I've talked about this in a previous video, which is going to include him having having to improve his jump shot and the efficiency with which he shoots it. Yeah, so we kind of ended up just having to do the opposite. At the time that I said that, that was true because we thought that there was still a chance that Killian's shot was going to come around. And has it come around since then more frequently um, than it did three years ago? Like, yeah. Um, I don't know if you look at the numbers. Maybe it's like the exact same. But at least if you eyeball test it, you know, on a nightly basis, his shots go in more than it feels like they used to. Um, whereas now though, you would kind of just say, I actually want the ball in Killian's hands because he's a low turnover or high assist guy. Right. So that's just kind of how that one's shifted. So, so that one's interesting. Cause it's not that I was wrong. It was literally just like, a as the, you know, also the arrival of Jade and Ivy kind of changed everything too. So I didn't, you know, it's not like we really had that context at the time yet. So I'm totally willing to admit when I have a dog shit take, but I actually don't think that one was, it wasn't inherently wrong. Back to the video. Uh, if that doesn't happen though, oh, that's not good. <laughs> well, because it did. Cade Cunningham needs the ball in his hands. And I, well, that's actually kind of a sneaky, another sneaky fun thing about Cade that I really, really enjoy is how fun he is off the ball. Like you're not going to classify him as a slasher or like an, you know, like a baseline cutter. Like he can pull that off. It's definitely in his arsenal, but it's not like, it's really fun, but in a, in a primary setting, you're going to want him to be your primary initiator. And when he comes to Detroit, he's going to be surrounded by shooters. You have Sadiq Bay, who is a historically good three point shooter as a rookie. You have Jeremy Grant, you have Frank Jackson, assuming he comes back, which we'll see about that. Uh, I'd like him to. You have Josh Jackson. You even have Isaiah Stewart. Like, you want to talk about a, one There's of the most Isaiah. interesting two-man games, the, mo the one of the most interesting potential two-man games on the roster? It's going to be Cade Cunningham and Isaiah Stewart. Not just because Cade is an elite pick-and-roll passer, but because Isaiah Stewart can pick and pop. Like, I know that when people think about Isaiah, if you're not a Pistons fan, you probably just think of this really tough, big bully ball guy. People always liken him to Ben Wallace, which is just so annoying. Wrong. Even Ben was like, please stop doing that. Yeah. Um, but I don't think enough people know Isaiah yeah, Stewart has a three ball. That's coming. He can shoot that motherfucker, bro. Like, I've, now we know that, right? You're watching this now. You're like, well, yeah, I, you're saying this like it was some hot take. We know Isaiah Stewart can shoot threes. No, we did not know that. When I said this, when I delivered this take, it was still like a kind of if you know, you know type of deal. Um, if you go back and look at his, if you look at the game logs in his rookie season and, and the threes that he was taking, or rather the ones that he wasn't taking, it's a lot of zeros. And then like on some random nights, you'll see some ones and twos. You know what I mean? Maybe near the end of the season, there was like some threes or something like that. Well, obviously threes, but you know, he's like actually getting up attempts. Um, so that, yeah, like good for previous Nick on that one. Isaiah Stewart can shoot that motherfucker hundred percent. Actually, it's already here. I think no, after the whistle, Isaiah probably put up like 23s this past season. I swear to God, he made like 17 of them. Mm -hmm. And then additionally, I think he shot like a little over, a touch over 30% 
which is definitely going to help. And I think it's also frustrating because, like, Pistons fans are like, we don't want Jalen Green. We don't want Evan Mobley. I totally understand that because you have the first pick. But the end game was get a top three pick. So it's annoying to me that we're now trying to downplay the talent of the former two because the reality is that the top three, they all have skills that are going to translate at the next level. And the one thing that I do hate about the draft is we do this every single year, and it's nobody's fault. It's just this is just what we do, is you're like, man, one, this guy's really good. At two, this guy's really good. Three, this guy's really good. And it's always difficult for us to imagine a world in which these players aren't going to pan out. And this is the especially the case this season. And it's entirely conceivable that they're all great. Because what was what was the Zion class? Was it uh, it was Zion Ja. It was RJ3? I don't remember who was third off the top RJ, of my head. I think. Um, but all those guys have turned out to be pretty good. So, it's again, it's entirely conceivable that they could all be good. But you just kind of feel like one of these guys is one of these guys is going to be like the 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 worst of these three, and you just wonder who it's going to be. And right now, I don't I I don't know, dude. I don't know. Right now, the best is Evan Mobley, and then whoever you would put second between Jalen and Cade. I don't I don't think people would. I, like honestly, it doesn't matter. I think I think Evan is so the the disparity between one and two. No matter who you'd want to put there between Cade and Jalen. Um, you know, if you put him up against Evan, I, I just don't think it's close. So that, that one, you know, people wanted Mobley first. Like they really did. Um, obviously I would never walk back what we did though. No. And whoever's worse again, that could be completely marginal. Like it could be, we could be talking about like a Trey, Luca, Aiton. I want to say this Luca, Trey and Aiton. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't a scorching take Nick, but okay. Uh, scenario where it's like, they're all great in their own respective way, and being comparative is weird, and I always think that it is. Um, I also want to say this about Cade. I got a text earlier today, and it was like, people think that Cade is this generational talent. Even Troy Weaver, by the way, the Pistons general manager, like a month or two before the lottery even happened, was like, I don't see any uh, generational talents in this upcoming class. I don't see a LeBron. I don't see a Shaq. So that didn't all of the sudden change. And by the way, that's not a bad thing. So the text that I got today was, Cade's ceiling could very well be Jason Tatum with braids. How true is that? I don't know. Is it hilarious? Yes. Those of you who have been around for a long time know that I have a soft spot in my heart for guards who are over six foot five, which is one of the reasons I love Killian so much. And having a guy like Cade Cunningham, uh, these primary playmakers who are like disguised as wings but are actually point guards are like this new wave of basketball player. And it's super important to have them on your basketball team if you want to win games. So Kate Cunningham is going to help us win a lot of basketball games. I guess, I guess the boy, oh boy. Time is a funny thing, man. I know he didn't play last year. I know he didn't. But what if I told you that since January 1st of 2023, the Detroit Lions have won more games than the Pistons? The Lions have won 10. The Pistons have won 9. The Pistons have played damn near like 60 more games than the Lions have. So, again, I know K didn't play last year, but uh, we are not winning a lot of games, as I elegantly put it. Uh, sorry, I, I know that these videos are always just all over the place, and I need to stop apologizing for it because at this point, it's just what they are. Yeah, but I'm an, I the I guess the overall the overarching theme of what I'm trying to say is stop trying to convince yourselves that players are something that they're not just because you feel like everybody is against you. Like, which by the way, Cade was in Detroit today. Was at the Tigers game. And there was a there were, we <laughs> want Cade that. chance. And Cade yeah. liked that. He smiled. He laughed. There's video of it, and so everyone can go cry because you don't have him. Um, and I do. And God, it feels so good. Okay, uh, I don't. I did not need that last part. Major pause there. Kind of like the face of like uh, I'm seeing a fucking ghost here. Like I'm seeing the future and realizing what I just said was insane. Um, yeah, I mean. I remember, man, when he went to that Tigers game, because like I said earlier, we weren't entirely convinced that we were going to get him. And there were these pictures that were coming out where he's like in this suite with um, it was like him, Isaiah, Troy was there. I, was Dwayne there? I don't remember. Um, I think like Arn Tellum was there, too. I don't remember what the crew was, but he was there. And the we want Cade chance like that did happen. Um, people were like posting pictures with him, like outside of the stadium. And it was happening, dude, like. 
And I remember all the shit talking, like people, like especially Rockets fans, because you know it was, he, they want the Texas guy, right? They want the kid from Texas. He's from Arlington, right? So, um, I would say that Rockets fans are probably happy with what they ended up with. Cavs fans won, they won, and then Pistons fans, uh, like, I'm still ecstatic. Now Let's move to the next control. one. Beautiful, beautiful. Primary control. Beautiful. Primary control. Beautiful. Primary control. Beautiful.